Partnered by Times Influence. Good evening, I'm Juhi Rajput and you're watching Emerging SME, a TV program which highlights the achievements of those SMEs which from a modest beginning have now become a brand name in their respective business verticals. The first company we are featuring today is Alpha Design Technologies. Alpha was established with a view to put into action Make in India policy of Government of India. To talk on company's innovative product range, we've been joined by Mr. H.S. Shankar, CMD Alpha Design. Good evening, Mr. Shankar, and welcome to the show. Mr. Shankar, first of all, tell us about the wide range of products offered by Alpha Design Technologies. We have been concentrating on uh, defense electronics and avionics products and projects, optoelectronics and fire control systems for the armed forces, that is for the tanks and infantry, then for the electronic warfare equipment, again needed by Army, Air Force and uh, the paramilitary forces, then the communication and C3I systems and we also went in for meeting the requirements of the various uh, specific requirements of the missile systems particularly in the RF seeker. Then we went over to the requirements of the simulators and uh, the contract manufacture and other areas. Mr. Shankar, please share with us some of the prestigious orders backed by Alpha Design Technologies in defense sector. The national uh, scenario, the orders we have backed over the period of time for the last about uh, 14 years since we are in, we are in, we are being in the service now, uh, it would concentrate mostly on the fire control system like uh, handheld thermal imager sites, the tank uh, oriented uh, thermal imager based fire control systems both for the T-72 tanks and the BMPs and then we have got also the orders which we have executed on the EW side, quite a few projects for the DRDO and uh, that is for the laboratories which was in Hyderabad and in Bangalore. Then we have also made out certain projects and products for the requirement of the armed forces through Bharat Electronics, particularly for the upgradation of the helicopters. Then we have for, got for the export orders uh, various uh, equipment and systems which we have provided as part of the offsets. So these are the broad canvas of products and projects which we have dealt with in the years for the past few years. And we are also at present also carrying on the same uh, group of uh, equipment and systems which are added with uh, certain simulators for the tanks called as the BMP simulators for which we have got the orders for more than about almost about 47 crore rupees now 57 numbers we have to deliver this year and next year then we have got the laser target designators needed by the army some 130 numbers which we will again be doing it this year and next year Mr. Shankar, how is Alpha Design Technologies contributing to make an India policy of the government of India? Yeah, uh, you know this is uh, a very uh, important initiative in, in our opinion which government of India has taken and uh, we are the prime uh, movers and then uh, we have taken a lot of advantages out of this and uh, also we feel that it has given a tremendous boost to the indigenous development, manufacture and production and supply to the armed forces. The, basically what it has envisaged is that as for the defense procurement policy, quite a lot of the procurements by the government of India has been categorized into various categories such as buy India, buy and make India and Indian design, develop, manufactured products that could be given to Indian uh, armed forces and then make one and make two different categories of uh, projects and products which could be developed, productionized and supplied to the armed forces. So on that basis there is a very very nicely laid out uh, well proven uh, uh, ground for working where the public sector enterprises, private sectors compete on equal terms and whichever is technically qualified and which is the lowest cost will win the orders. So on that basis we have been able to win the projects and because of this the projects that are developed in India 
as our own R&D projects get the priority and the preference because those which are developed here by our own R&D can be had at a lesser cost and lesser price comparatively as compared to those with which we work let us say on a technology transfer basis where large amount of technology transfer fees and other procurement has to be done from abroad which will always be costlier. Mr. Shankar, Alpha's management, operations and production executives and skilled technicians combine a wealth of experience in all facets of defense technology. Please tell us something about your core team. And in our company, from the beginning, we had the advantage of taking the best out of the professional capabilities that are available in Indian market. Most of our senior level people, we have more than about 30 senior level people, they are either ex-Bharat Electronics, ex-HIL or former from former people who have served with distinction in DRDO laboratories and including those from the retired service people from Army Navy Air Force. We have all combined together to form the core team at the top echelon. Now, we have a middle level people who are being brought up from inception as young engineers and now they have reached the stages of 10 years, 14 years surveys who form the middle management group. Then we have got large number of engineers, more than about 650 engineers directly from the universities and from the diploma institutions and they form the bulk of our technical professional manpower. Here we'll take a short break, lots more on the other side, stay tuned. Welcome back and we have with us Mr. H.S. Shankar, CMD Alpha Design Technologies. Mr. Shankar, now tell us about your various collaborations, JVs and subsidiaries. Each of the products and projects that we make, we have at least about 20 to 25 our own subcontractors with whom we have developed a very close relationship and rapport and similar quality assurance facilities and all that and capabilities we have built up. So that is our first tier, two tier, three partners in, in India. Secondly, with some of them, we have developed a sort of a joint venture or sometimes we have even bought them over, these companies. We bought over a company called as Stockholm Engineering Services, which was manufacturing subsystems and airframe parts for HIM, for the Sukhoi aircrafts. We put a lot of investments over there and it is one of our prime companies now which is our own subsidiary company and this has given a base for companies abroad to come and have a look at us that if we are already doing for very high-end fighter aircrafts why can't we utilize them also for the requirements for companies abroad so we are having a lot of such collaborative projects coming up both with companies in Israel and also in Germany and of course in Russia. So these are the three areas which we have concentrated upon in bringing up. This company abroad that is Elbit have come over to us and together with them we have established a joint venture company which is 49% equity from uh, abroad, 51% from us. So like that we have formed the joint venture company with Elbit and uh, this was signed uh, during our Honorable Prime Minister's visit uh, last year to Israel on the sidelines and then later now we have given our own presentations to the Government of India for obtaining the industry license. So these are the prime uh, initiatives we have taken. Mr. Shankar, Alpha Design Technologies aims at creating strong indigenous R&D and technology base. What's your vision for the company? Our R&D is very strong. Whatever little we get out of our profits, major portions of it we reinvest in our R&D and that is coming up very well and uh, it will be the basis for our future projects and products. In addition to these initiatives which we have taken in the defense and uh, avionics field, we also decided about three years back to get into the space uh, activities. We were very lucky to have been selected by ISRO for making, for being the first private sector industry to be awarded 
the prestigious project for assembly, integration and testing called as the IRNSS uh, type of satellite. Two of them we made it, IRNSS 1i recently which was launched from Srihari Kota on the 12th of April this year and uh, it, uh, it was the first time that a private sector industry was successful. So one of our satellites which has been in which we have contributed and in which ISRO has given us tremendous support and help. ISRO scientists are very well known for their professional capabilities and knowledge and with their help we have developed this and we have made this and we have also been uh, working with ISRO on various other projects both on the launcher side and on the ground segment. On the basis of this success, ISRO has again allocated to us the projects in the SORC countries. As you can remember, the SORC satellite was launched by the government of India, by the Prime Minister and all the Prime Ministers of the SORC countries joined together held this particular satellite which was launched by ISRO about a year back and on the basis of the success now we are going to do one after the other we have already got the orders for doing it in Bhutan and we will now be doing it in Bangladesh later and in Afghanistan and Nepal and Sri Lanka and all that we have already done it in Maldives so this spread of knowledge through the ISRO satellites which are up above that is going to be spread on the ground segment by our own R&D and uh, production engineers, service engineers and that is giving a boost, tremendous boost to spread of knowledge which we consider it as of great importance. Thanks Mr. Shankar for joining us in the program. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure uh, talking to all of you friends. Now let's move on to the next story. Driven by the objective of providing a holistic bouquet of financial products and services to the economically weaker enterprising sections of the community, Mark Darshak Financial Services Limited is operating in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and several other states since 2007. Since then, Mark Darshak has shown viable, sustainable and effective growth and expanded its field operations across length and breadth of North India. Good evening Mr. Rahul and welcome to the show. First of all, I would like to ask you, Mark Darshak Financial Services is driven by the objective of facilitating equitable access to capital resources. What was the idea behind setting up MFSL? If you look at uh, the past 20 years of the Indian economy, you would see that the economy is growing at a very fast pace. But at the same time, a vast section of the communities are getting left behind in that economic growth. And uh, the primary reason for them getting left out of that economic growth is that they don't have access to uh, resources which will enable them in being active participants in this economic growth. The philosophy behind Madhashak is basically we facilitate uh, the access to these kind of resources, we enable their capacities to access these resources so that they can be active participants in the economic growth of the country and uh, in the long run basically there is equitable distribution of the, uh, of the income and the wealth within the economy. Please tell us about the financial products and other offerings of MFSL. We are working as a NBFC microfinance institution. All our products basically align with the requirements of the poor communities and we give them loans ranging from uh, 5000 rupees to 30,000 rupees which they primarily use for their income generation and business related activities. Also partial investments in livestock uh, animal husbandry and agri allied activities. That is where our money is pr primarily used for. The unique feature in our um, uh, services is that we give loans only to women. And we don't give individual loans, we give them to give the, uh, give the loans to them as a collective. The borrowers and the groups from where we get good credit discipline primarily three factors. One, they, uh, we see the proof of money being used in the business. 
we see the proof of income from the business being used for the welfare of the family and the children and we see proof of growth of business and the required cre credit discipline being maintained by the borrower they graduate with us to, to somebody who's borrowed 10000 rupees for the first time gets 15000 the next time then 20000 25000 30000 and gradually they go up to 40 45000 rupees so that's the scope of the products that we provide to them in addition to them we uh, to this we also enable them in uh, you know opening their savings accounts with public sector banks now would like to ask you what are the major milestones achieved by the company from its inception in 2007 the key milestones for us have been on various fronts. One has been reaching out to two and a half lakh families, um, managing a portfolio of around 300, 300 crores, uh, establishing linkages with more than 30 banks and NBFCs, onboarding something like 800 employees in the organization, and managing to retain about 90% of them over a period of last 10 years. Where we stand today is primarily a result of the continuous efforts of our team in working towards a common vision and mission of enabling equitable distribution of income in the community. Which are the states where you are operational? We work in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Uttarakhand, Haryana, Himachal. These are the five states in which we work. Within this, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar hold something like 80% of our business. And the reason for them, for us working so deeply in these two states is because these are the two states which need financial services and have been ignored over past decades uh, in the financial infrastructure. So financial inclusion, if it has to succeed in the country, it has to succeed in these two states first. Please share some success stories of your clients and community initiatives with us. Personally for me, each of our client is a success story. So if you ask, we have something like 4 lakh success stories like there is a client uh, who's been with us for last seven years uh, here in Lucknow only the first time that she borrowed she borrowed 3000 rupees from us and she was doing a business of soft toys and gradually over the years she has graduated to borrowing something like 30,000 rupees in tranches from us and her business, which she used to do on her own, has she now employs around five people in her own business, and she sends soft toys to Bombay, Delhi, Jaipur. You know, it, it's a joy to see uh, these kind of women growing. Another uh, another story that reminds me, uh, and that has actually touched me very deeply, is of our borrower who started off uh, as a client with us and then joined us as an employee. Uh, average boy who works with us, who's a graduate and who works with us as a field officer, he manages something like 600 to 700 loans. This lady on her own manages double that load. She manages two children and then she helps her brother-in-law in managing a tea stall that she started with the help of Mark Dashik loan. So there are several success stories like this. Mark Dashak is also providing training, education, skill development and livelihood employment opportunities to women and youth. Please also tell us about that. Skill development basically enables the youth uh, in uh, you know, taking short term courses from us and then getting gainfully employed. So we train them in banking and financial services and then they go, go on and work for 
multinational institutions, banks, private sector banks, public sector banks. The livelihood is primarily split into two parts. We do farm sector livelihood development where we work with a large segment of farmers. We help them in identifying what are the kind of crops they should be cultivating, the right kind of uh, mm, you know uh, varieties of crops that they should be cultivating, get uh, technical assistance from uh, institutions which are involved in agriculture research and then also help them in storage, warehousing and accessing the markets in an aggregated manner. Once they buy input supplies in an aggregated manner or once they go to the market in an aggregated manner, they, uh, they enjoy uh, large scale cost advantages. So, and that brings down their costs of uh, cultivation and increases their uh, income from harvesting and selling the produce in the market. So we work with a large set of farmers in that. And then India, you know, is a country of artisans. You know, every nook and corner that you go of the country, you will find, find an artisan. Uh, you find them in bangle work, glass work, hand paintings, brassware, uh, carpets, bangle making, uh, wood work, uh, what not. So this is a country of artisans. We do um, skill development for them. We do design workshops, we get uh, you know interns and professionals from international design institutions not only in India but from abroad also. So these people come, they work with artisans for 2-3 months, help them in learning new designs, diversifying their product range, understanding the requirements of the market, making new products as per the requirements of the market and uh, ultimately uh, uh, you know gelling with the market in the medium to long run. So going forward, we believe that financial inclusion supported with skill development, livelihoods, market access, uh, supporting infrastructure creation in the rural markets and rural economy is something that will enhance the absorption of the financial services in the long run. And that is the intention for Magdarshak being engaged in all these things. Now tell us about the MFSL partners and your collaborations with financial institutes. Two institutions who have been instrumental, but they have invested in the organization. One is Opportunity International Australia uh, through its Indian subsidiary of the Avikas and they have made equity investment in the organization when we had just started off way back in 2011 and 12 and uh, SIDBI, Small Industries Development Bank of India which has not only given us equity infusion but also given us term loans on a very regular basis. Uh, Magdashuk today works with something like 30 plus financial institutions. This includes around 14-15 public sector banks. Then we work with something like 14-15 NBFCs who have given us term loans at various points of time. Led by an able set of board and management, Mark Darshak Financial Services has enabled over 2.5 lakh families in establishing and diversifying business for achieving economic strengthening. Microfinance in Mark Darshak gives me the opportunity to work closely with uh, the community. A uh, lot of women in Lucknow and Barabanki, they uh, do chicken and uh, weaving work. Uh, we realized that their earning uh, from these works is very low uh, when we decided to provide them training uh, and uh, improve the quality of work they do. Uh, as of now, we have done uh, training of more than 500 artisans. Uh, it has helped them to uh, increase their earning and to improve their quality of work. Mark Darshak core team has a vast experience in banking operations and microfinance, which helps the organization to develop relevant policies, processes and mechanism for comprehensive growth. Mark Darshak has been accorded MF2 grading by Brickwork Ratings, which signifies high capacity to manage its operations in a sustainable manner and good performance of code of conduct dimensions. With this, we come to an end of this episode. I'll be back next week with some more success stories of other SMEs. Till then, goodbye and take care.
Partnered by Times Influence.